So let's say you have a patient who's on a ventilator and all of a sudden they start to get mildly hypoxic with SpO2s and the high 80s. And all of a sudden you start to notice that their lips and their fingertips and maybe a little bit of their face starts to have a little bit of a bluish hue to them. So you turn up the ventilator to 100% and nothing really resolves. Then you decide to get an ABG and you see that the PaO2 or the partial pressure of oxygen in the arteries is somewhere in the 200-300 range, but the oxygen saturation remains around 88 to 90%. What diagnosis are you thinking of? There's a couple of clues here. One is the bluish hue of the patient. Two is the pulse ox that's hanging around in the high 80s. And three is a normal PaO2. So all of these in combination with some sort of etiology, which we'll get into, is going to point you in the direction of met hemoglobinemia. So what happens in met hemoglobinemia is you basically change the iron oxygen binding sites on hemoglobin. There's typically four of them. These iron sites get oxidated, so they go from a ferrous state to a ferric state. And that causes the ferric iron molecules to not pick up oxygen. However, the ferrous mo molecules that exist then hold on to oxygen even tighter so that the oxygen that is on uh, hemoglobin doesn't get dropped off to the peripheral tissues like it normally would. If you're thinking about the oxygen association curve in your head, that curve is getting shifted to the left. Now, typically, patients are exposed to some sort of medication that causes this transformational change in the iron molecules. The classic medications we think, so, think of are dapsone, nitrates, or benzocaine, which is a local anesthetic. The classic scenario that you may end up in is an endoscopy suite or someone getting a transesophageal echo, where they use a benzocaine spray, otherwise known as a hurricane spray, and then they start to get desaturations and get this cyanosis. So this is a pretty rare event, to be honest, when it comes to benzocaine. In one study where they looked at 30,000 transesophageal echoes, only about 0.067% of patients ended up having methemoglobinemia as a result of getting exposed to benzocaine. When it does happen, however, you can have a spectrum of symptoms that really can be as sort of benign as just having the cyanosis or as severe as potentially even causing death. And the way that we have the spectrum or determine how severe the symptoms are going to be is by doing coax symmetry on a blood gas to figure out what percentage of methemoglobinemia is present in the patient's blood. So if you have 10% methemoglobinemia cells, usually that's when you start to see cyanosis. 15% is when you start to see chocolate, muddy brown blood. Around 20% is when patients may start to complain about headaches or lightheadedness. Around 30 to 50% is when you start to see patients becoming confused or potentially even losing consciousness. And around 50% is when you start to have really severe symptoms like arrhythmias, acidosis, potentially even coma. And then once you get above 70%, that's when these are getting into fatal levels. One quick point about the pulse ox. The pulse ox works where you basically emit light through the a capillary bed and then see how much light is getting absorbed there. There's two different wavelengths that go up. One is 660 nanometers, the other one is 940. And basically what the pulse ox is trying to figure out is what percentage of deoxygenated blood there is versus oxygenated blood. And those two different hemoglobin uh, situations basically absorb light at different wavelengths, which is why there's two wavelengths admitted. And then that ratio gives you your oxygen saturation. Met hemoglobinemia absorbs both of those wavelength lights. And so as you get to the ranges of like 30 to 35% of met hemoglobinemia in the blood, you basically get an absorption ratio of both of those wavelengths of one. And that ratio of one leads you with a pulse ox of 85%. Now the treatment, you'll likely start by increasing the FiO2 that the patient's getting to 100%, but the ultimate treatment to treat met hemoglobinemia is going to be methylene blue, which acts as a reduction agent to reduce that ferric back to a fair state. And although this isn't a contraindication, the one population you want to be cautious of using methylene blue in is patients with G6PD deficiency. And if met hemoglobinemia is again the job done, sometimes you have to use ascorbic acid or vitamin C, exchange transfusions, or even hyperbaric oxygen therapy. In terms of prognosis for patients, patients usually respond well to the initial treatment with methylene blue, and they usually just need a little bit of time to recover and sort of get rid of that methyl hemoglobinemia and resolve their uh, normal hemoglobin levels.